Good morning, friends. It's great to be with you this Tuesday morning. I want to encourage you to grab your hot coffee, grab your hot tea, and let's dive into God's Word together. Today we're going to look at the effect spending time with Jesus has, just spending time with Him, how it has an effect on who we are. And this is what we're going to see as we go into Acts chapter 4. And as we're diving in this morning, I just want to remind you as we do every day, if you have any prayer requests at all, you can type those into the comment section. When you see a prayer request come across, please be sure to reply. But if you're with us on the podcast version or the YouTube version, you can always email us your prayer request at biblecast at tfc.org. And as we're getting going this morning, I just want to encourage you, if you haven't done so already, and you'd like to get to know a little bit more about Trinity Fellowship, you can join the Growth Track. Just be a part of the Growth Track. You can find out more about that. It's just four easy classes that you can connect with there. We do them online to make it very easy for you to be a part of that. You can go to tfc.org slash growth track if you'd like to learn a little bit more about that. All right, here we go. This is Acts chapter 4, and we're picking up, obviously, where we left off at the end of chapter 3 yesterday. And you might remember that Peter and John had been teaching and preaching in the area. And the, the, what we're going to see here in verse 4 is that the priest and the leaders, the religious leaders uh, in Jerusalem, they didn't like it. They didn't like what was going down. And so let's pick up the story there in Acts chapter 4, verse 1. It says, The teaching and preaching of Peter and John angered the priest, the captain of the temple police, and representatives of the Jewish sect of the Sadducees. So we see here actually three different groups. These are three different groups, kind of uh, different factions, if you will, uh, all part of the Jewish faith. And, uh, but you had the, the temple priest. These were the ones that were actually serving in the temple area. They were the ones that would have probably been considered really the leaders uh, and they were the ones that did all of the sacrifices and led all of the ceremony and were the ones that led the people. Uh, and then you had the captain of the temple police. Now this would have been probably the person that was in charge of arresting Jesus uh, and uh, leading the uh, kind of the religious leaders, the, the Jewish religious leaders kind of had their own police force that they used to enforce uh, their own uh, belief system. This would have been separate from the Romans that had traveled with them when they arrested Jesus in the garden. And then you have representatives of the Jewish sect of the Sadducees, which is another kind of just group. And so all of these were there, and they were angered by what Jesus was teaching, or what uh, Peter and John were teaching specifically about Jesus. Now, of course, they were angered because they, these are the men that had crucified Jesus. These are the ones that had gone through and crucified Jesus, taken him before Pilate, all of those things. And so, of course, Peter and John are teaching that Jesus was raised from the dead. And uh, this, of course, was very upsetting to these gentlemen. It says, They were furious that the people were being taught that in Jesus there is a resurrection from the dead. So while Peter and John were still speaking, the Jewish authorities came to the temple courts to oppose them. One little side note there, we might remember that when Jesus himself was teaching, <clears throat> the Sadducees are the ones that actually don't even believe in the re resurrection of the dead. So it says, They had them arrested, and since it was already evening, they kept them in custody until the next day. <clears throat> now you can see, this is no uh, huge surprise. Jesus had issues with these exact same people. And they were the ones that uh, Jesus was always opposing in the temple courts. <clears throat> and here these men come, and they arrest Peter and John. It says they arrest them right at the end of the day. Now they're teaching. They're sitting there with the people. They're among everybody. They, they made a big show of it. They arrest them. It says since it was evening, uh, it says they kept them overnight. Now they, would have, they could have just as easily arrested them earlier in the day. Or they could have waited until tomorrow. I mean, it's not like Peter and John are fugitives, you know, running from the law. So this is a show. This is a show of force uh, that they're trying to do and trying to intimidate them and put them in custody and really to try to oppress them. It says, Yet there were many in the crowd who believed the message, bringing the total number of men who believed to nearly 5,000. So remember, we started with three. Uh, now we're up to 5,000 that the church has. These are 5,000 men. So again, we're probably in the 12 to 15,000 range of families, uh, members that were believing in who Jesus was. The church really is exploding. We're just in the first few days of, of what is happening here. And the early church is beginning to explode. The Holy Spirit is moving uh, among the people and they're really seeing uh, some, some real breakthrough that is happening here. So it says, The next day, many Jewish leaders religious scholars and elders of the people convened a meeting in Jerusalem. Aeneas, the high priest, was there with 
Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others who were members of the high priest family. They made Peter and John stand in front of the council as they questioned them, saying, Tell us, by what power and authority have you done these things? Now, specifically, these things that they're talking about are healing the beggar. I mean, this is one of those things that we had a crippled beggar. <clears throat> Again, remember, we're going to find out here a bit later. He was probably about 40 years old, had been there for many years, possibly decades. This was a, this was a beggar that was known to everybody. These, these priests, the temple guard, everybody would have known who this man was, and clearly the man had been healed. I mean, there's no doubt about it, and everybody knows it. There's no question that the healing has taken place. There's no question that the man who was crippled is now walking and dancing and, and proclaiming God's goodness among the people. And so they can't talk about, you know, did it happen? So they want to say, by what power and authority? And they're looking for a way to accuse these men as well. Now, this is not, they're, they're not, you know, this is not one of those courts where they're asking because they're trying to get information. They're looking for a way to trap them. Now, I want you to see how this responds. One of the things that I think is so powerful, it's something that Jesus had told the disciples would happen. He told them, He said, don't worry when you get called before the leaders. Don't worry when you have to give an account for yourselves because in that moment, He says, the Holy Spirit will be there and will fill your mouths with what you need to say. Now, this is the first time we actually see an example of that happening. So it says, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, answered, respected elders and leaders of the people, Listen, are we being put on trial today for doing an act of kindness by healing a fray and crippled man? And we'll continue in just a minute. But I want you to see here how it says, Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is encouragement for us. So as you're going throughout your day, you know, sometimes we just have to have difficult conversations. Sometimes you might get called in by a superior. Sometimes we have to deal with maybe a, uh, somebody at our, our kid's school, or we have to deal with another parent, or we just have to deal. I mean, in life, we just have to engage with other people. And what's amazing here is that it was filled with the Holy Spirit. And that's one of the things we can trust the Holy Spirit to do, to fill our mouths, to give us what it is that we need to say. You know, when you live your life filled with Holy Spirit, it transforms you and it gives you the empowerment you need to engage. Peter continues and says, Well then, you and everyone else in Israel should know that it is by the power of the name of Jesus that the crippled man stands here today completely healed. You crucified Jesus Christ of Nazareth, but God raised Him from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that you, the builders, have rejected and now has become the cornerstone. Now here, of course, uh, Peter is quoting the Old Testament. He's quoting a psalm, and he's talking about how the stone that was rejected has become the cornerstone, uh, or other versions might even say the capstone. In other words, the stone that was irregularly shaped, the one that the builder wouldn't, wouldn't use, the one that they couldn't figure out how to make it fit. It's become the center. It's become the most important stone. And that's who Jesus is. And he's, he's just giving a, a clear indication to who Jesus is. He was the Messiah. The one that was rejected is now become the chief one, the cornerstone, the one that is holding it all together, the one upon which everything else is built. And he's telling them these things. He says, There is no one else who has the power to save us, for there is only one name to whom God has given authority by which we must experience salvation, the name of Jesus. And this is incredible because he's just preaching who Jesus is and he's just preaching about his authority. Remember, we are going to see this even as we continue in Acts. This idea of the name of Jesus, talking about the authority, the power, the might of who Jesus is. It says the council members were astonished as they witnessed the bold courage of Peter and John, especially when they discovered that they were just ordinary men who never had religious training. Now, this is so important for us to recognize. So often I hear people say, well, I would love to lead a small group. I would love to help, but I just don't know the Bible. I'm just not that good of a, of a Bible scholar. Well, you know, it just we just study the Bible, and I'm so proud of you for being a part of the uh, Bible cast this morning, exercising your spiritual muscles, but it's just time on task, just spending time and engaging. But the important thing is, is you don't have to have special training. The Bible is easily understood. We have the Holy Spirit to bring illumination to us. And it concludes with this. It says, Then they began to understand the effect Jesus had on them simply by spending time with them. 
And that's the effect of Jesus. When we spend time with Him, He emboldens us, strengthens us, transforms us, and empowers us. So Father, let that be true of us today. As we spend time with you, Jesus, we ask for that transformation to happen in us as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we love you guys. We love y'all. Have an amazing day. God bless.